zu Gast sind äh, im Schwarmlabor. Ähm, Agatha Galaka ist äh, Mitglied im Wissenschaftskolleg hier in Berlin, ist externes, äh, prominentes Mitglied, ist in Bangalore in dem Research Institut von Indien vertreten, hat äh, zwei unglaublich interessante Bücher geschrieben und äh, unglaublich viele Arbeit noch mal mit Papers und äh, Journal-Artikel, die ihr auf der Seite runterzuladen sind. Seine Studenten gewinnen unglaublich viele Preise. Und äh, würde uns heute was über die Organisation von Westen äh, starten erzählen. Hat dadurch gab es einen schönen Artikel im Zeitmagazin, das ich Ihnen ausgedacht habe. Also das ist kein, fünf Exemplare sind da, der Rest wird euch kopieren, also ein bisschen mit Papierkarte ähm, rumschwimmen. Und die, ähm, genau, es wird so eine halbe, dreiviertel Stunde gehen. Und mehr denke ich jetzt gar nicht so dran. Ich würde dann jetzt beginnen, ach ja, das Vortrag ist komplett in Englisch. Is that this royal duty is performed by the workers only for a few minutes 
and then they go off and do something else, and other workers come and take on this bio duty. So this happens, this is uh, work that happens in shifts, and this has a very interesting consequence that it gives an opportunity for a large number of workers to actually come in physical contact with the team and therefore get information from the team. So there are very interesting mechanisms that social insects have, which are of interest to us. The workers go out and bring food, in this case, in the case of honeybees, it is nectar and pollen. And there are again very interesting mechanisms of they are finding the food, they are uh, processing the food, and of course, honeybees are able to come back home and perform a dance through which they are able to communicate information about food, the direction, the distance, the quality, the quantity, all of this can be conveyed through a symbolic dance that the uh, workers perform. And as I said, the most interesting thing for biology, of course, is what we call the act of altruism. Workers spend all their life not producing their own offspring, but working for the welfare of the queen. In fact, the altruism can be even more spectacular from the human point of view. When the honeybee stings somebody, if the honeybee stings you, it is unable to withdraw the sting from your body. Because the sting is armed with barbs pointing outwards, the sting gets stuck in your body and it's unable to withdraw. The bee tries to withdraw. Its abdomen ruptures. The skin, the poison gland and a part of the, the intestines of the bee are left hanging on their body. This bee flies away only to die in a few minutes. And in fact, this poison gland, minus the owner, continues to pop venom into your body and people have measured for some 60 seconds after this bee has flown away. This of course makes this an extremely efficient venom delivery mechanism, but it of course means instant suicide for the, for the worker bee was done. And yet, uh, worker bees will most unhesitatingly sting you if you stick your finger in their nest. You can experience that by doing this little experiment. Stick your finger in their nest. <laughs> no bee will hesitate. No bee will say, You sting today, I want to live for a few more days. So, how does natural selection promote such behavior? This is another topic of very interest. And then, of course, we have ants, also social insects. And then one thing that the ants have done with the honeybees have not done, and that is subgroups of ants which specialize in some particular kind of tasks actually become differentiated in their body structure, shape, and size. And so, for example, all of these ants belong to the same species, to the same colony, but you can see they're very different in shape and size, and their body structure is actually suited to the kind of tasks. We call these different groups of social insects, which do different tasks. We use the word caste, borrowed from, uh, from humans. So there are the queen caste, there's the worker caste in honeybees. In the end, amongst the workers, there are miners, media, there are soldiers, so there are different castes of individuals specialized in doing do, do different kinds of things. And that brings me to wasps, which are my favorite social insects. Most wasps, of course, are solitary. A few are social. Most bees are solitary, only a few are social. But all ants and all termites are social. Amongst almost all the social wasps are called paper wasps. And the reason why they are called paper wasps is because they build their nests not from soil as termites do, not from leaves as ants often do, not from wax as bees do, but from paper. And where do they get the paper from? They manufacture. And if you look at the way they manufacture the paper, the manufacture the paper is precisely the way that we would manufacture paper. They use their mandibles, scrape simple fibers from trees, twigs, leaves, chew it up in their mandibles, add some chemical substances, make it into pulp, and actually spread it into the same And it is real paper you can write on it. And here is a rather large wasp nest, completely covered with a paper envelope, leaving just one small opening for the foragers to go in and out. This entire thing is a paper envelope. And if you have the courage to open this paper envelope, then of course you will see a multi storied apartment complex inside. Several tiers made all made of paper, and here this is where they lay their book. In, in the, if you turn this around, you will see honeycomb like. 